forever doesn't always mean eternity in the Bible. Now, if we look at one of the scriptures that you brought up in Revelation 14, 11, it says this right here. The smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. Now, here it is lined out in the Greek. For, ever, ever. Three words. And as was already stated in the comments, the word ever comes from a word that means period of time. In fact, the word for in this phrase also has to do with time. Now, in the Bible, God often uses the word forever in regard to humanity to refer until something is done, until an event is over. Now, rather than just make that claim and move on, let's use the Bible to support it. Because this is what the Bible says. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, the prophet Samuel, the priest Samuel, is said that he would serve God in the temple forever. Now, in an effort to let the Bible explain itself, let's look what the Bible also says. In just the previous chapter, the Bible says that he would serve God all the days of his life. So forever, in the context of 1 Samuel chapter 2, referencing Samuel, is referring only to his lifespan. Let's look at another example in the book of Jonah. Jonah said that he was swallowed up in the belly of the great fish, and he was there forever, he says. But wait a minute, just a few verses later, it says that the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah out on dry ground. So, in this context, forever means for the time period that Jonah was in the belly of the great fish. Okay, but what about New Testament? You also brought up Matthew twenty-five forty-six, And it says, These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. But notice that this scripture says that the punishment is what's eternal, not the punishing. And Paul defines what that punishment is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9, speaking of the wicked who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. So that everlasting punishment that the wicked will get is everlasting destruction, not everlasting torment in the fires of hell. So what will happen to the wicked? Well, let's look at a few texts. What is that everlasting destruction? Revelation 20 verses 10 is also quoted by many because it says the phrase forever and ever, but that's the same phrase that's used in Revelation 14 verse 11. But the Bible always explains itself either in the direct context or in another verse close by, or sometimes in another book completely. But verse 9 in this context, in the direct context of verse 10, states that the destruction of the wicked is that they will be devoured from the fire that comes from God out of heaven. And that's not the only place that says that. Let's look in Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4 verses 1 to 3 compares the reward of the wicked to the reward of the righteous. While the righteous will receive the healing from the Son of God, it says that the wicked will be burned as stubble. It says the fire will burn so hot and so thoroughly that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Nothing remains behind, not, not the slightest bit of remnant. And you shall tread down their ashes under the soles of your feet. Isaiah 47 goes even further than that and says not only will the wicked be consumed down to ashes, but there will not even be a fire to warm at. Now, if hellfire is eternal, then there's a fire to warm at, right? But the Bible, the Bible says, behold, they shall be a stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor a fire to sit before. Now, Revelation 21 states that God will wipe away all tears from our eyes, and he will destroy everything that sin and sinners have caused. Nothing that sin has caused, none of the sadness, none of the depression, none of the consequences, none of that will exist anymore. Now, if hellfire is eternal, then this verse cannot be true. Because for hellfire to be eternal, then it would not be possible for God to do away with sin and sinners, because he would have to artificially keep them alive. Furthermore, John 3, 16 and 17 says that everlasting life is the reward of the righteous. For the wicked to be burning in hell for all eternity, everlasting life would have to be their reward as well. And the reason for that is found in Ecclesiastes 9, verses 5, 6, and 10. It says that the dead know nothing. If the wicked are burning forever for all eternity in hellfire, they know something, therefore they're not dead. So if they're burning in hellfire for all eternity, then Ecclesiastes chapter 9 also cannot be true. So I suppose my question for you is this. Is the Bible lying, or are those who teach that hell is eternal the ones that are lying?